Hi there. It's July the 28th and we're continuing our journey through the book of Second Chronicles and we're looking at Chronicles 21 to 23. After the death of Jehoshaphat, uh, there's a real turn in the ways of, of Judah. Judah has been following the Lord in Jehoshaphat's time and has stayed close to the Lord, but now when, when his son Jehoram comes to the throne, there's a total change around. And Jehoram leads the people in the ways of Baal. He marries uh, Ahab's daughter uh, of, of Israel. And he is, uh, he is a, just a, a, a really rotten piece of stuff. So much so that in the middle of the chapter, um, a letter comes from Elijah, uh, who is actually now gone to heaven. So whether this letter was written before Elijah went to heaven in a prophetic way or whether it comes from heaven, we don't know. But a letter comes from Elijah to say that God is going to judge uh, Jehoram. And by the way, Jehoram, one of the terrible things he does, which unfortunately some kings were doing in those times, was to destroy all his brothers, to destroy his six brothers so that they couldn't uh, challenge him and challenge his throne. So Jehoram actually dies a terrible death and there's plague on the nation and, uh, and, and he, he really is a, a nasty piece of work, a bad piece of work. And then uh, his son Ahaziah uh, uh, comes to the throne after him. And Ahaziah is really just the same as his father. He's allying with the kings of Israel. And he particularly goes to uh, comfort Yoram, the king of Israel, when Yoram is wounded in battle against the Syrians and uh, uh, Ramod Gilad. And he comes back to Israel to be uh, healed. And this time Yehu comes and uh, he kills um, your um, king of Israel, but he also comes across Ahaziah, who's gone to visit the sick Yoram, and at this point, uh, Yoram, uh, um, Ahaziah also dies. So Judah and Israel both lose their king at this point. Now, at uh, this moment, there arises uh, a wild card, if you like, in the royal household, and this is Atalia, who is the queen mother, um, and she takes power. Um, and she makes sure that she destroys all of those who are uh, um, going to threaten her rule or going to rise against her. It's again another one of these um, killing off anyone who could threaten her, except that the youngest of Ahaziah's sons, who is called Yoash, is protected by, um, by his mother Yehoshaphat and is taken into custody, he's taken into care, he's taken into protection in the temple and no one knows that he's there. So Atalia reigns for a number of years but then in chapter 23 one of the Levites, the high priest Jehoiada, uh, moves to reinstate Joash. Joash has become uh, of age and Jehoiada uh, he takes the Levites into his confidence and he uh, re recruits a number of leading figures from uh, from Judah and together they take Joash and they uh, proclaim him king and there's a great rejoicing and there's a great sound of joy because a descendant of David has been protected and the the kingdom is saved for David. Atalia hears about it and she cries treason treason when she hears about it but it's too late for her and she is taken away to the horse gate and there she is killed and her reign comes to an end and so we see that the line of David the righteous line of David with Joash comes back to the fore what we see here is a terrible uh, tragedy a tragic decline in the house of Judah having been keeping close to the ways of the Lord over a period of time there's now this terrible diversion and it's Joash who will bring the people back to the fear of the Lord and to the worship of the Lord. We cannot prosper when the Lord is not in control. We cannot prosper going our own ways. And Judah finds this out as they go through this terrible period of machinations and human politicking. Only the Lord, only the fear of the Lord brings true wisdom. Let's learn from that today as we seek to follow his ways in everything we do in our lives. Have a very good July the 28th.